hello good afternoon and welcome to today's episode um we promise to talk about circumcision taking care of your baby's circumcision wound um here in nigeria we have a lot of misconceptions with respect to um what to use on a baby's circumcision wound and what not to use uh, this video is not necessarily for new moms it's for everybody so please um, invite your friends to listen, help us share the video, um, make more people aware. There are lots of misconceptions that we have passed down from generation to generation. And most times what we have is uh, new mothers with new information, but they don't want to disrespect the old mothers. Because you have maybe your mom or your mom-in-law is insisting, this is what you have to use. So um, I think at that point, you have to use what is best for your child. You're not uh, going to be... Um, well, like they're not going to insult anybody. The plan is not for you to insult anybody, but the plan is for you to be very assertive about your child's health. So, what you use on your child's wound, especially when it has to do with a concession wound, should not be exactly the same with when you talk about regular other wound because you know the penis is a different organ that uh, has. A different uh, function it doesn't have more than it doesn't have just one function so if you destroy the pennies of the child by being reckless you are going to cause that child a very uh, deep um, deep problem it's not something that will just go away um, taking care of erectile dysfunction is still a battle a lot of trials and errors are going on. So as a mother, you should try not to contribute to your child's problem. Um, how can you do this? By doing the best thing for your child. Taking medical advice. You have your doctors, your pharmacists, your nurses, people you can talk to, medically inclined people you can talk to about situation instead of just uh, going off with whatever advice you got from people of the other generation. Now, I want us to discuss basic things that they had used in the time past that had worked. But I want you to remember and understand that that something worked medically or took care of a disease does not necessarily mean that that thing doesn't have a side effect. So, in pharmacy, we try to discuss more of what the side effect would be. It might not be a today side effect. It might be a side effect that will come up on the long run later on in life. So you want to do use items that are safest for your child. So you want to heal a wound. You use something that can damage the penis. What have you achieved? Maybe there's no damage to the penis today. But if something is capable of damaging the penis at the long run, I think it's something you should try not to use. There's no point. I've had people talk about using hydraulic fluid, engine oil, you know, stuff like this to take care of the wound. After circumcision, they apply engine oil, high-z brake fluid, all sorts of car, petroleum uh, stuff on the penis. Why do you do that? The truth is that, let me be honest with you, engine oil will heal a wound fast engine oil will heal a wound fast but the problem is not in the wound healing we are now discussing what is the effect of having an engine oil on the wound remember that when you talk about engine oil in the production there are particles of lead in it of course these things are produced with hydrocarbons and hydrocarbon is not good for you it's not good for your baby so if your child has a wound that wound can absorb parts, if not most of the things that you rub on it. So you want to use chemicals or drugs that are least harmful to the system of the child. You know, I have people tell me that skin, there is no big deal. They can rub anything on the skin, uh, skin and get away with it. No, you can't rub anything on the skin and get away with it. You remember that when you rub a bleaching cream, the bleaching cream changes your color and the color of your skin is something that is not just changed on the surface. It has to be absorbed to be able to 
remove the coloration of the melanin in the skin. So there is a lot of absorption that have gone on in the cream. That's what I'm trying to say. So what you rub on your skin is not just um, inert substances that will not affect your body. No. When you rub anything on your skin, it can get into your system. Imagine when you now rub it on an open wound. These are open wounds with blood vessels. Absorption is very high. Why will you use engine oil on the penis of a child? Apart from being absorbed into the system, are you aware that this can even affect the neurotransmitter system of that child? Because you know the penis is not only for urination, the penis also serves other functions. By the time the child is old, he needs to have erection, you know, and you must have destroyed the nerves of that penis just because you want to heal the, heal the wound fast. So the idea is not just to heal the wound, but to heal the wound safe. That's the main idea of ensuring that you listen when your healthcare practitioners are giving you advice on the best option to use on your child. Don't use engine oil, don't use hydraulic fluid, don't use a brake fluid or whatever thing you get. These are hydrocarbon, they are petroleum products and they contain lead. They are not good for the system of your child. Your child is too young. I remember that uh, circumcision happened like two days or eight days after birth the baby is still very very young too young to process some kind of chemicals here we go so firstly you are home with your baby after circumcision the baby is now under your care you are now the doctor the nurse the pharmacist the everything over this child life so what do you do the first thing to remember is that you must bait your child twice daily I'm sure you must have discussed with your doctor what option of circumcision is available to you. And I'm sure it's a male child. We don't practice actively female circumcision in Nigeria anymore. So I'm referring to the male circumcision right now. So um, there are different options that, that um, doctors use. It's either they use the plastic ring method or they use... There, there, are, there are newer methods that are uh, probably easier. But I use the plastic ring method uh, for my own child. Uh, I think it's a bit older than newer method that uh, that that cost less pain and less uh, bloodletting. So when you are home with the child after the circumcision, irrespective of the method that you use, the first thing you have to think of is how to keep the child clean because this is an open wound that need to heal fast. So how do you keep the child clean? Ensure you bathe your baby twice daily. It doesn't matter if the baby is dirty or not. Just bathe twice daily because there's a wound. So what do you use to bait this child at the point of, or rather after circumcision? Um, you have to use clean water. Clean water. In Nigeria, I don't think everybody has access to clean water. But if you do have access to clean water, use clean water. If you do not have access to clean water, you might consider boiling whatever water you have 200 degrees celsius allow the water to boil after the water must have boiled you allow it to cool down then you use the water to bathe the child you know that method is different from boiling water and mixing it with cold water in you know boiling water is able to take away the organism or rather kill the organisms that are in that water that might cause your baby infection. But boiling water and mixing it with cold water does not have the same effect as boiling water alone. So if you do not have um, clean water, please use this method I just mentioned. And boil your own water and allow it to cool down. Then you know it's for your baby's bathing alone. Uh, people talk about using very sterile water. Sterile water are those waters that go into your injection uh maybe infusions and the uh, drips what you call drips like something like this i'm sure you must have seen this maybe when you are sick in the hospital they will deliver this to you this was what i was meant what i mentioned the other day when we we're talking about what every mother should have at home this is a very very this normal saline is very very clean and it's sterile so you can actually use it to not just the circumcision wound you can use it to clean wound surfaces if it's something you have but for this baby you're talking about baiting the baby I wonder if you can afford to use this to bait your child every day so this might be for regular cleaning of wound but if you are if you have to mix your own water 
please try to use there are a lot of an, uh, antiseptics in the market I don't want to mention any name but this is one of them you know what I mean uh, actually these uh, I have found that there is a problem with the way mothers use this we don't use it correctly most times I don't know labels labels are different with these with these, uh, uh, these uh, what do you call them these um, what's the general disinfectants the labels are different the manufacturer will give you what they call minimum inhibitory concentration. That is the minimum mixing or dilution that you have to do for that disinfectant for it to be able to take care of any organism in the bathing water. You know we are in Africa. We are not in the same condition with people who are being supplied clean water direct from the water source. So we take care of every stage of our own health directly or indirectly so what am i saying there is always a direction on how to mix this but people mix it wrongly this is 10 mil do you know that for you to have okay let me give you an idea this is um actually a bottle that i'm sure most people are conversant with in nigeria this bottle is 1.5 mil of water clean water now one liter bottle what is one liter bottle in Nigeria now? Beer. Is beer one liter bottle? Please, somebody help me here. If beer is one liter bottle, one liter of water should be mixed with 10 ml. This is 10 ml of disinfectant. So if you know you are not mixing it right, just know you are not getting it. So the idea is to use the disinfectant to kill any organism in water. So if you want to use that method as a way of sterilizing your water or disinfecting your water not sterilize but disinfect if you want to use this method to disinfect the water you will use to bathe your baby hope you are using the appropriate meter per disinfectant so 10 ml of this is 10 ml i mean every mother should know about this cup it's the usual cup for giving babies medication so every one liter of clean water should have 10 ml of disinfectant so that's the right way to mix the water for bathing your baby and there are right and wrong disinfectants that you can use for your baby so the idea is please if you are going to use disinfectant make sure you are mixing your disinfectant the right way there is minimum inhibitory concentration for every disinfectant for most of them as i mentioned earlier like this one the minimum inhibitory concentration is 10 ml of disinfectant to one liter of water so if you're going to use five liter or three liters of water to bathe your baby you need about 30 ml of the disinfectant that's for the disinfection of the water then as much as possible before you leave the hospital you must have discussed with your doctor if you will need uh, an analgesic or not so if the doctor is most times they don't offer analgesic sometimes if you're most of the time the nurse is the one that carry out circumcision in nigeria and that's also the same with most part of the of the world. Maybe our viewers will tell us what is happening in their own country, but most time they will discharge the child with uh, an analgesic. Sometimes they don't. But if you are given an analgesic, please try to offer your baby the analgesic after feeding, not an anti stomach. So when you feed your child, you offer what we have discussed how to give babies uh, medications before now so you give the right dose and make sure the baby doesn't pour it we discussed on what to use so that your baby can get the full dose that your doctor has prescribed so what do you do next people think of using astringents that's methylated spirits to clean up the circumcision wound. some people talk about hydrogen peroxide please that's a no no a lot is going on in nigeria and i don't understand how we started using um, brake fluid and engine oil to clean circumcision wound as I said earlier that might be very fast on the wound healing but that might not be the best for your child please don't assume that because my mother said he did it this way my mother-in-law said he did it this way and nothing has happened to my husband don't do that to your child there's really no need these are hydrocarbons containing lead and all that so let's not repeat ourselves um, uh, most doctors will, will say no to hydrogen peroxide and methylated spirit. And you know why? Hydrogen peroxide actually destroys cell wall of the organism. That's if an organism is existing in the wound. 
but it also actively destroys the cell wall of the of the wound area you know of the child which is not the best for the child so what do you do at that point you, the best thing for you is to ensure that the water you are going to use to bathe a baby that is that has undergone circumcision is either a sterile water or a disinfected water also ensure that you do not touch directly the child's um, circumcision wound with your bare hand our hand you know they say microorganism is ubiquitous so our hands are filled with diverse kinds of microorganisms you can do yourself good by washing up your hand every time some people um, we use uh, what do you call it uh, um, some people will use uh, disinfectants or sterilizer, hand, ster hand sanitizers, you know, like this particular one I'm showing you here. You can have it at home, something you can use to wipe your hands so that you don't infect the wound. So if you are taking care of yourself, you are taking care of the water, most times there is really no need of cleaning of that surface. That surface should be left alone to breathe. Depending on what your doctor prescribed for you, don't assume you need an antibiotics for that wound to heal. If you are adequately giving your child the right multivitamin, you know, there are lots of multivitamins that we have trusted over the years. I'm not here to advertise anyone, but I know that mothers, before they leave the hospital, most of them go home with multivitamin for the child. If you are boosting your child with an extra multivitamin and you are exclusively breastfeeding or not, or feeding the child properly, whatever means of feeding that you want, that should be okay to help the child wound to heal on its own. So what do we do most times? We are, uh, you advise not to unnecessarily clean that surface. After bathing with very clean water or disinfected water or sterile water, depending on if the nurse or whoever carried out the circumcision decide to cover it with gauze or not, if it's not covered with gauze, after bathing, you can nicely apply ordinary petroleum jelly. This is just a jelly. There are different brands of jelly in Nigeria. Cover it thinly, not necessarily to pack the whole. What, that what you get when they say cover something with petroleum jelly. Mothers cover it so much that the whole area begins to grow rashes. Then there's been this debate on if you can use diaper or not for a child that has undergone circumcision. If you use the jelly. That's, it's just an inert jelly. If you use this jelly on top of the wound, you can easily use simple uh, diaper. But make sure that the diaper is very loose so that it does not have a lot of frictions with the surface. Sometimes this, the, the, the circumcision wound can stick to the diaper and that's a very big problem. So what do you intend to do? You have to uh, use diaper loosely on the child within that period. What usually happens is that within a period of 5, 7 to 14 days, the ring, if you use the ring method, will fall off nicely on its own. Sometimes it falls off and there is uh, a bit of sticky part of it that is still remaining. Don't try to pull it out by yourself. Allow it to fall off completely completely just hold your hand if you have to change your hands change your hands don't go picking on the wound or doing any extra thing just allow the wound to naturally follow if after 14 days you are worried maybe the wound did not um maybe the ring didn't fall off on its own you can go back to your healthcare practitioner no need of getting roadside information for a baby that is barely up to a, a month old so we have discussed what you should not use on the wound of the child a circumcised child and um, we have also discussed how you can manage it generally by using sterile water disinfected water we have discussed how to disinfect water we talked about using 10 ml of the disinfectant to one liter of the water we also talked about using petroleum jelly just to um, cover the surface thinly and not allow frictions you know, and one one wonderful thing is that you have to dress the baby in such a way that he wears loose clothes. That's not the time to do fashion and design, pinging color. No, it's the time to dress the baby in, in in loose clothes so that the baby's body can, you know, breathe and and the wound will heal without anything touching the surface. Then uh, we we will also 
finally we will mention uh, one or two things about how you handle um, sorry I forgot what I was going to say um, okay that be it uh, for this child that has finally gone through the circumcision and the child's wound has healed you know there are things that you you should look out for things that if it's happening to the child it's time to go back to the hospital you know there is this yellowish flu that come out from circumcision wound that panic mothers actually is normal and is okay but when it's not yellowish when it be when it's a pus and it's smelling it's time for you to return to the hospital that's one secondly when there's a bleeding that is not controlled don't assume that it will stop if it's not stopping the first day and you feel something is off it's time for you to visit the doctor and ask questions why is my baby's circumcision wound not healing why is it still bleeding or have you done anything wrong you know somebody has hit that place or touched it wrongly that's about bleeding if your child has fever within the time of that circumcision irrespective of whatever you feel maybe it's not the circumcision maybe it's not you still need to report to the doctor go back to your healthcare practitioner and find out what next to do it's not normal you know don't allow anybody to tell you oh it's okay maybe the baby stressed from the circumcision if there's any form of increase in temperature within that period please go back to the doctor or the nurse that gave you um, that did the circumcision for your child so uh apart from bleeding apart from infection going on that side if there is swelling unnecessary swelling maybe the wound is not healing properly or the 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 the, the, the ring has slipped downwards and is not well positioned any anymore please don't touch that area or your own don't try to to become a surgeon over that penis you know what you do within that period can determine the sexual health of your male child so it's important that you do the right thing or the right things for your child so i hope you have enjoyed this episode on how to take care of circumcision wound for your male children uh, as we said earlier hopefully there are no female circumcisions ongoing still in nigeria uh, next time we will discuss another very important topic Thank you very much all for watching. I can see you all, Stephen, Ifa, Yobodeze, Chibuzo, Afubo, all for watching. Thank you, Energy Tony, Jesu Babangida. Thank you very much. This will be the end of the show. See you next time. So for now, we don't have a particular time for our show, so we will fix random timing. Um, please bear with us till we have particular frequency and time. Thank you very much.